This podcast will show how we can depict national income in graphical terms and also analyze how changes in prices will affect national income in the same graphical setup. Analyzing national income will play a very important role in much of what we do. And will be particularly interested in how the value of national income changes when prices changed. A national income is equal to the value of all the goods produced, and that's going to be equal to the price times the quantity produced for each one of the products in the economy. So that we can easily depict these graphically, we'll assume that there are only two goods called X and Y. And let's assume that there are 100 units of X that produced, and Y production equals 50. Now, if we want to take a look at the national income, we have to bring in the prices for these two products. And let's assume that the price of X is $2 per X, and the price of Y is $10 per Y. So now we have the information that we need to figure out what the national income is. So to get the value of X production, we multiply the amount of X produced, 100X, multiplied times the price of X, which is $2 per X. The outcome then is $200 for X production. Notice that I've included the units, so it's 100X and $2 per X for the price. So that the X is canceled, left with dollars, so that the units comes out, come out correctly, which is to say $200 is the value of X production. Keeping this straight will help in later applications. Strongly recommend that you keep these units straight as you do these calculations. It will be very helpful later on. And in a similar fashion, we can calculate the value of Y production as equal to $500 for this economy. The total value of national production then is $700, adding these two together. As we build up towards the graphical representation of this, it will also be helpful to think about how we can calculate the maximum amount of X that could be purchased with this income at these prices. So again, that's $700. If X is $2 per unit, then the maximum amount of X that could be purchased with this national income would be 350X. Similarly, we could purchase a total of 70Y with this same income. So now we have the basic information needed to depict this graphically. So if the original production point of 50Y and 100X, now add in the information about the maximum amount of Y and X that can be purchased, 70Y and 350X, and include a line that connects all of these three points. This line we call the national income line because it represents all of the possible combinations of goods that can be purchased at that value of national income. And the final thing to note is the slope of this line. It is 70y over 350x, the rise over the run. And another way to depict that is that it is one-fifth y for every x. That is the absolute value of the slope of this line. We can now depict this in a more general form using an equation of national income. So national income is going to be equal to, as we mentioned, the value of X production plus the value of Y production. We can rearrange this by solving for Y, and we get the following equation, where the Y-intercept is given by the national income divided by the price of Y, and where the slope of the line is the ratio of the prices, PX over PY, which is the opportunity cost of purchasing X. So let's go back to the earlier example to have an application of this equation. So the y-intercept is 70y, which is the national income, divided by the price of y. That is to say 700 divided by $700 divided by the price of y. And where the slope of this line is, once again, the ratio of the relative prices, or one-fifth y per x. Now in many contexts, we're going to be concerned about what happens when a price changes. So let's suppose that the price of X rises to $10 per X and we hold the production level fixed. Holding production fixed allows us to see how the 
income changes and the ability of the purchase of the goods changes by simply the price changing for one of the products in the economy. Now let's consider how the national income changes. The price of Ys remain, remains the same, so we still have $500 worth of Y production, but now we have $1,000 worth of X productions, $10 per X multiplied times the 100 units of X, giving a total national income of $1,500. Now, what is the total amount of Y that can now be purchased? With $1,500 of income and a, a price of $10 per Y, 150Y. By the same token, $1,500 worth of uh, national income will buy 150X. So the new national income line is given by the blue line. That is to say, a line whose slope represents the relative prices. It goes through the original production point, and the Y and X intercepts represent the total amount of Y and X that can be consumed. So the, in this particular instance, with the price changing, the relative price, the price of X over the price of Y, the slope of the national income line is now 1Y per X because the price of X is one is $10 per X and the price of Y is $10 per Y.